Hello everyone. So recently I've been trying out the new Westman Atelier Super Loaded Liquid Highlighter. And unfortunately I found that this product did irritate my skin, which was a real surprise to me because in the past I had always done really well with all of the other Westman Atelier makeup products. Later on I did find that this product includes some synthetic fragrance, so that might be why I had problems with it. Uh, in any case, I won't be using this product, but but trying it out did get me to go back and also uh, re-examine some of the other liquid highlighters that I have in my collection and to try to use those in some different ways. So what I've mostly done in the past when I was using liquid highlighters is to use them in combination with liquid foundation. So I've either mixed them with the foundation or I have put them on first and then put the foundation over the top of them. And I feel like most of the highlighters that I have have worked pretty well for that. However, more recently, I haven't really been using liquid foundation most of the time. What I've mostly instead been doing is just using a little bit of a cream concealer or a cream foundation stick to cover up whatever issues I might have on my face and then allowing the rest of my skin to go bare. And so therefore, I've been wondering whether it would be possible to use liquid uh, highlighters on my face uh, without having any liquid uh, foundation involved. So I certainly am able to use liquid uh, highlighters in the same way that I would use a cream highlighter on a spot base. But what I've been trying to experiment with doing over the past few days is also to mix a little bit of the liquid uh, highlighters into a little bit of moisturizer and then using this on my face as an, on an overall basis. And I feel like this has worked out really well for me that it's kind of given my aging skin a little bit more glow and a little bit uh, more life to it. And so I think that that's been a, a really good thing. And I'm actually thinking that I'm going to do this on a regular basis from now on. Now I did find that of the products that I own that some of them worked a lot better for this purpose than others. So I experimented by uh, shooting some footage in natural light here uh, of all of the liquid highlighters that I own as well as all of the glowy uh, primers that I own. And so I hope that you can uh, take a look at the footage if you're interested and see which ones you think look the best. So maybe first a little bit of information about me. I'm 58 years old and I have dry and sensitive skin and I've never had any kind of cosmetic work done like surgery or injections and I don't intend to ever do that kind of a thing. So I'm really looking for products that will help me to look a little bit fresher and a little bit younger. And over the past two years I've tried out more than a thousand makeup and skincare products and I found a lot of things that I think have helped my skin a lot but I'm certainly open to looking for uh, new things that uh, help even more. One thing that I have decided is that I have a hard and fast rule that if any makeup or any skincare products irritate my skin at all, then I just don't use those at all. And the reason for that is that I found this to be a slippery slope and that if I say, oh, this is just a little bit irritating, it's not that big of a deal, then my skin quality really starts to break down and pretty sure it's pretty soon it's really a mess and starts to reacting to everything. And I feel that the reason that my skin looks really good in general is because I've been so focused on avoiding the things that are irritating to me. And I think that that's important both because I want to look nice now and also because skin irritation is really highly correlated with aging just in general in the academic literature. Uh, so therefore I, I don't want to have my skin be irritated because I think that that can be really bad for me long term as well. And through trial and error, I have found that uh, there are a number of ingredients that do always irritate my skin when I use those. And so I just simply don't use any products with those ingredients in them. Most of those are products that uh, places like EWG uh, agree are problematic and that are well supported in the literature as being problematic for skin. In addition, I have uh, kind of decided that most fragrances, even if they're natural fragrances, are probably not the best thing that I can do for my skin. So I haven't totally uh, given up on all products that include things like essential oils or uh, processed fragrances like linalool, but I kind of tend to be veer away from those kinds of products because in a lot of cases I do find them to be a bit irritating and I know that many other people are irritated by those ingredients as well. 
So now let's talk about the Westman Atelier Super Loaded Liquid Highlighter, which was just introduced by Westman Atelier a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it is available in three shades. The shade names are the same as their cream uh, super loaded highlighters. Uh, so there is one that's called Peau de Soleil, which is a bronzy color, one that's called Peau de Peche, which is a peachy skin type color, and then one that's called Peau de Rosé, which has a little bit of rosiness to it. And the shades are not exactly the same colors as the uh, super loaded uh, cream highlighters, but they are um, somewhat similar. And the website for these products uh, suggests that you can wear these liquid highlighters either on their own, you can layer them on foundation, or you can tap it into the high points of your face for a quick touch up. And in terms of the ingredients, the first ingredient for the product is squalane. It doesn't say whether or not this product is derived from olives or whether it's uh, produced by uh, genetically uh, engineered uh, microbes that are fermenting other things. So I'd be interested in finding that out. It also lists on the ingredient list that it contains avocado oil, sunflower seed oil, pomegranate seed oil, and subaki oil. It also contains some sodium hyaluronate. So this is primarily a product that's consisting of hydrators and oils. So it should be providing a lot of moisture and a lot of uh, kind of oiliness to the skin, uh, much more so than almost all of the other highlighters in my collection. And the texture of this oil is pretty thick and it has a little bit of a shimmery nature to it. So I just have the peach one. So I will show you what this looks like on my hand. So here's the product and then I'll thin it down a little bit. So you can see that this is uh, not just shimmery, but it also has a little bit of heft to it. So usually I don't uh, use any products that have synthetic fragrance in them, but when I first saw this product, I uh, watched a whole video uh, for more than half an hour of uh, Gucci Westman of Westman Atelier talking about the product. And she didn't say anything about fragrance at all. And then when I saw the ingredient list, it says that it has fragrance in it, but because it said elsewhere on the Westman Atelier website that they didn't use any synthetic fragrances, I felt that this was uh, instead some kind of a natural fragrance, so I decided to give this a try. So I purchased this product immediately after it was released, uh, both because I wanted to review it and because I'm a big fan of Westman Atelier in general. And then after a couple of weeks, they added to the website uh, the comment that the Yuzu Citron scent in Liquid Super Loaded is made from safer skin, synthetic ingredients, and is compliant with our no list. The fragrance is formulated without par parabens, phthalates, PEGs, polycyclic musks, and nitro musks. Gucci loves the subtle calming energy this scent brings to the product experience and equally as important that it is a sustainable alternative to natural fragrance. And Gucci Westman, of course, is uh, the founder of Westman Atelier and a really well-known makeup artist that often works with celebrities. So what I will say first is that I'm surprised that they're bringing up the idea that this is an alternative to natural fragrances because in the past, Westman Italia has never found it necessary to put natural fragrances in their products to begin with. So even that is a departure. Now the only product in the past that had natural fragrances in it was their lip gloss. So this one did have uh, linalool and limonene and a couple of other citrus type uh, processed natural natural flavors in it. And I was able to tolerate that fine. I tend to find that uh, natural fragrances and lip glosses tend to be mostly okay for me uh, and are much less irritating than things that I'm actually putting on the skin of my face. The other product of theirs that does have a list flavor as an ingredient is the uh, super loaded tinted highlighters, the cream versions of them, but it just lists flavor and I never found that to be an objectionable scent. It's my mildly scented and I felt like uh, I tried it, the tasted it once to see if it really was a flavor and I thought it tasted okay. So I'm probably thinking that that uh, is 
was an okay product as well. I was a bit surprised recently to see that Credo lists synthetic fragrance uh, for that product, so I wrote to them to try to find out what that was, and I also wrote to Westman Atelier to try to find out what that is, and neither one of them have gotten a response back to me, but they said they were going to research it, so we'll see what they say. But other than that, I think the idea that Westman Atelier is now taking the position that putting synthetic fragrance or natural fragrance in uh, their products is a departure from what they've done in the past. Because in the past, I feel that they've been very focused on the idea that these are going to not irritate anyone's skin, that Gucci Westman herself has uh, a history of rosacea, and so she has sensitive skin, and so they want to make sure that everyone can wear these products. And that, so the idea that they're thinking that they should put fragrance in them at all is a bit strange to me because I have never seen a dermatologist say that putting any of these kinds of fragrances in, in uh, products is a good idea. And all things being equal, I find that I think that uh, I would much rather have a product that doesn't have a scent in it. Now, it may be the case that there's an audience out there that uh, they think that they can get that is interested in buying uh, makeup that has fragrance in it. There certainly are a lot of other companies out there like Chanel and Dior and other companies that, that do put fragrance in their, their cosmetics. Now, in terms of the synthetic fragrances, there seems to be a bit of a trend where companies that uh, claim that they're you know, concerned about clean beauty have been persuaded that these uh, new synthetic fragrances, uh, that they can be clean and that it's perfectly fine to put these clean synthetic fragrances and things. So for instance, I heard about this from the Stella McCartney line that she didn't, at first she didn't want to put any fragrances in and then finally she was persuaded that it would be a good idea. Uh, I also read that uh, Michelle Pfeiffer was interested in putting together a line of perfumes that had no synthetic fragrances and that are, were supposed to be better for the, uh, people's health and better for the environment. And then she was persuaded also to use uh, these supposedly safe synthetic uh, fragrances. And it seems like maybe that's the case with Gucci Westman too. Now, for me, in all three of these cases, they haven't worked out for me at all. So the, the Stella McCartney one, that was the one that I was going to have be my last try. So I, I did try that. There was supposed to only be a very small amount of this supposedly safe synthetic fragrance. So I tried that. All three of the products that I used did irritate my skin, and I did find the smell to be offensive to me. Uh, and in terms of the, the Michelle Pfeiffer perfumes, those are called uh, Henry Rose, I found all of those to be very, very offensive in terms of the scent. I didn't try putting those on my skin. And now in terms of this Westman Atelier product, I find this, the smell to be mildly offensive. And I do find the product to be uh, mildly irritating uh, and uh, more than mildly irritating depending on what condition my skin's already in. So this is something that's concerning for me in general because I feel like I have a hard enough time finding products out there now that are have been good for me. And so the idea that these companies are going to start thinking that these, these supposedly safe synthetic fragrances are fine to throw in all different products uh, makes my life a lot more difficult because I'm not going to be able to use any more of those products. And I think that many other people may end up feeling the same way. So in addition to the synthetic fragrance, these new Westman Atelier liquid highlighters, they also include limonene, uh, linalool, and ginger root extract. And although I usually don't have uh, really issues when something says it's an extract, I do think that uh, for a lot of people that limonene or linalool also could also could be uh, irritating to the skin. And I think that for me, maybe sometimes those are irritating and maybe not. It's possible that that's what the issue is in this particular product that is irritating my skin. I'm not absolutely sure, but in any case, it just really surprises me that Westman Atelier has now decided that they're gonna be putting fragrances in their cosmetics, when in the past, the, I think a lot of the reason that I've done really well with their products is because they haven't had any fragrance in them. And this is something that uh, Keir Weiss also did. So Keir Weiss was another uh, famous makeup artist who launched a, a line of particularly clean products. And then a year or two ago, she started putting um, 
fragrances in her products too, and they just list fragrance on the ingredient list. And I've heard a lot of people object to those both in terms of the scent and in terms of uh, the irritation. I personally have uh, just used a few of these products and I haven't used them enough to know if they've been irritating to me, but I definitely dislike the scent of that. So all in all, when it comes to definitions of clean beauty, I'm seeing a lot of real confusion in the marketplace. And so I think it's not a big surprise that there are a lot of people that are expressing skepticism about the whole product concept. So for one thing, Sephora and Credo uh, both say that uh, synthetic fragrances are okay to have in products and that they can still be called clean or they can still be sold by Credo. I also think the fact that there's a lot of companies out there whose products that I have come to trust uh, and who have historically been you know, clean beauty companies and that are uh, still self-identifying as clean beauty products that are putting a lot of really weird ingredients in their products and continuing to call themselves clean uh, and then I'm not able to tolerate those products at all. So I have seen that happen with Ritual Defee. I have seen that happen now with Westman Atelier. Uh, and I've seen that happen with RMS, which I will talk about in a little bit. So there's a lot of... Uh, uh, my sort of uh, stand uh, by companies that I've really uh, liked a lot that I are making a lot of products that I can no longer use. And then on the other hand, there's a lot of product companies that historically I haven't been able to use at all because they put in all kinds of uh, problematic ingredients that are now making products that are by anybody's standards, including dermatologist standards or my standards, uh, perfectly clean and that my skin seems to work really well with as well. So for instance, NARS, uh, out for 2022 and 2023, they introduced a bunch of products and they were all terrific. Terrific. And Pat McGrath, most of their products have been really great for me and uh, don't have any problematic ingredients in them. And Laura Mercier is uh, releasing a lot of products that are much cleaner than in the past and that I have been able to tolerate. In addition, I think that most of the Charlotte Tilbury products that have been released recently, those have pretty good ingredient lists uh, and don't have a fragrance in them. And I've been able to do well with those. And uh, Lisa Eldridge uh, really hasn't talked very much at all about whether her products are clean beauty, but I've done great with all of those. So I think this is very interesting how uh, much a minefield it is for the consumer. Uh, that's kind of fascinating, and that's really the main reason that I have this channel, is to try to sort all of this out and to provide information uh, to people that uh, might help them to make a little bit more sense of it without spending huge amounts of time uh, looking at ingredient lists. Now, I will say that with Westman Atelier, they do have a good return policy. So usually I don't return products uh, that irritate my skin. But in this case, I feel that I was really misled because they didn't mention that it had synthetic fragrance in it because I never would have bought it if I would read that it had synthetic fragrance. So I did uh, return that and their system just automatically gave me a refund and told me to pass the product on to someone else. So even though Westman Atelier is now acknowledging on the page for this product that uh, it does include synthetic fragrances, I see many other places on the Westman Atelier site, including the bottom of that same page that says that they don't use any synthetic fragrances. So before I move on to the other products, I thought that I would show you this uh, liquid highlighter in comparison to the Westman Atelier Super Loaded Tinted Highlighter in the cream version so that you can see uh, the differences. So what we have at the top is the cream version and then underneath it we have the liquid, liquid one. So the liquid one is obviously a, a lot shinier. This is a, a very thick oil type of a product and it's a very glossy. It doesn't really dry down, but eventually it does sink into your skin, especially if you put it right on bare skin. The uh, Peau de Peche is uh, more of a product that, that I use that's the, the sort of the same color as my skin, but just very slightly glowier, and I think that it really gives me a very pretty look. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this on just to demonstrate to you what it looks like. So I already have uh, some 
Lisa Eldridge highlighter mixed with moisturizer all over my face, but I didn't put on any of that as a spot highlighter. So you can see what, what this looks like. And this is still one of my favorite makeup products. So if I had to pick, you know, a dozen makeup products uh, to just use uh, all for the rest of my life and not pick anything else, this one would definitely be on the list. I think that in terms of giving me just a little bit of a, a pleasant glow that's very pretty, I, I really like the way this looks on my face. And I always feel like I look better when I put this on and it does go in, it does go on very easily. And it's kind of hard to mess up. Now this version, I have, I have all four of these because I like them so much. Uh, this version is the, uh, the Soleil one, and I found that it was really quite bronzy and golden to the point that I really didn't feel comfortable putting on my face. I, I think that it's, I thought it was gonna be more bronze than it actually is. It turned out to be more gold. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of this on as an eyeshadow topper. So I'll show you what this looks like on my eyes. I think it's very pretty for a, as an eyeshadow, but it just simply seems to be the wrong color for me to use it on my face. And then the other products that I have are ones that are both kind of on the pink side. So this is Peau de Rosé, which is kind of a, a, a light, uh, cool pink. And then there's this one, which is called Peau de Santé, which is kind of a peachy pink. And the peachy pink one was developed by Goop. Uh, by Gwyneth Paltrow, so this was her idea for a shade. Uh, and, and this is only available on the Westman Atelier site and the Goop site. So I will try putting on just a little bit of this as well, and you can see what it looks like. I think that both of these are super pretty. I can probably get away with putting a little bit of each one on each side. So, so this is why I was so excited about these liquid highlighters because I had had such good experiences with these, these uh, compact highlighters. Now, unfortunately, these compact highlighters, they're $75. And I think that a large percentage of the reason for that is because they are in these super beautiful but super uh, unnecessarily luxurious cases. So it's hard to justify for anybody spending $75 on one makeup item, but I do really like these highlighters and I am actually getting more use out of these than most of the other makeup products that I have purchased. So at least, um, at least I'm enjoying them. So now let's take a look at all of the other highlighters that I have in my collection. So what I will do for each highlighter, I will start out by showing you a little bit of it swatched on my hand, and I'll give you a little bit of information about the product and about my experiences with it. And then I will show you the video footage that I took yesterday of me trying on the product. And when I tried on the product, I mixed a little bit of it with some moisturizer, and then I uh, applied it to my whole face, and then I took a little bit more of the product than I applied it just on my cheekbones. So the first product that I have here is from Say, and this is called the Say Super Gel Glowy Highlighter, uh, which is uh, available in this small container for $16, and then there's also larger containers also. And there's two shades of this. One is a Star Glow, which is champagne, and then one is Sun Glow, which is a light golden blonde bronze. So this is what this product looks like. And so you can see how that uh, kind of uh, does blend into the skin even straight uh, pretty easily. Now the first thing that I notice about this product is that it does have a really strong smell. Even though it doesn't have any uh, fragrance ingredients listed on the ingredient list. And I think that the reason for that is it could, because it lists papaya seed oil. So this is something that I don't think is irritating my skin at all. I seem to do fine with this, but in terms of the scent, it always does take me a bit of back. So one thing that I have noticed about Say is that they do tend to be uh, targeting a younger target market of people that are maybe 30 or 35 and below. And so maybe that is why they are focusing on brightening aspects in their products. So they say that they include vitamin C, rosehip oil, and lactic acid. 
However, I do like the look of this product on my own skin a lot. I think it's kind of attractive. Now, in addition to the Star Glow shade, I also have this one, which is the uh, more bronzy type shade. So I will try this one on as well. And, and then I shot some video footage with this one. I think this one doesn't look really different than the other one, but I think I, when I put it on my skin, I thought it looked even a little bit better. It's just a, not quite as a, much of a opal type shimmer. It's more of like a bronzy type shimmer. And I thought that was kind of pretty, even on me. And I, certainly for someone with darker skin, it might be especially pretty. So this product says, made of 75% water and skincare packed ingredients, glowy skin gels lit from within glow gives the ultimate no makeup makeup look. Its universal shades can be used as a dewy primer under makeup, a spot highlighter mixed with skincare or as a body shimmer for all over glow. Uh, in terms of the ingredient list, it does include a polysorbate 80, which is a ingredient that could have contamination in it and therefore is not allowed by Credo. It would be, it does qualify as a clean at Sephora, however. I think that my conclusion from trying that product on again is that this is something that I think I should experiment with more and uh, should try using sort of more on a regular basis because I think that this is of the, the products that I've tried. This one is a, a nice product at a good price. So the next product that I have is uh, sort of the OG of this category, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. And this is a is pretty expensive in the full size version, but they also make this little mini version that I think that might be a good thing to give the product a try. So that's what I've done. So this is what it looks like. It comes on this little applicator and uh, but it smooths into the skin fairly easily. So this is what this looks like on my hand. So this product is available in 12 shades, although there's only four in that small container. And the ingredient list mentions a lot of moisturizers, including some squalane, uh, some glycerin, and then of course mica. There is a PEG in the uh, ingredient list and that would keep the product from being sold at Credo because they're afraid of contamination. But to my understanding, there's a lot less contamination in those kinds of products than has been the case in the past. And I have not really had any issues with uh, most products with PEGs in them. And this one seems perfectly fine to me. I think that uh, compared to a lot of these other uh, highlighters, this one is remarkable good for my skin and has worked out really well for me. So I feel like uh, for me this product has been uh, only moderately shiny so it's been uh, really easy for me to use. I haven't felt like it's given me the metallic look that some of these other kinds of products have. Uh, it's been good for my skin and I think that I don't have a, an issue uh, using it and again in the future both on a spot basis or uh, mixed with uh, foundation or mixed with a moisturizer. I really like this one. And the, sh the shade that I'm using here is 2, uh, which is fair. And I don't know if that would be the best shade for my skin. Uh, probably that might be a little bit light, but I think it looks nice. And I think that this is probably not a product that needs to be super picky and that you could probably get away with having a uh, a product that's a little bit off uh, and still have it look good. And the next product that I have here is from Typology. And Typology is a French skincare company that also makes a couple of cosmetic products. And so in this case, uh, this is a uh, highlighter that comes in a little glass bottle and it comes out with a little dropper. And so I will show you what this looks like. It's a a pretty um, thin liquid and it's quite shiny but it I found that it does blend into the skin very nicely. It mostly seems to be in a clear base. So what you really have is just skin care ingredients and a little tiny bit of shimmer. And again it says that this product contains vitamin C and that it also contains aloe. They claim that it's supposed to be really good for the skin. This is a new product. It was introduced in early 2023, I think. And I think that it's worked out really, really well for me. This product is actually sent from France. Uh, so that's where the boxes come from. But their website is very user friendly and I've gotten the products really quickly.
I think maybe in the video footage I put on maybe a little bit too much, so I might use a little bit less. But I do think it's very easily usable and that it's very pretty and that the price is not too high either. So all of those things uh, make me uh, think that this is a good product that, that I feel um, fine about using and that I will continue to use. Now the next product is one that I found on the Credo site and this is from Live Tinted and it is called Hue Glow and it comes in this little squeeze bottle. So I will show you some of this on my hand. This is super, super shimmery. So you can see that compared to some of these other highlighters, this one is uh, quite metallic looking in my opinion. And this is available in two shades. Uh, the one that I have is Dawn, which is a rose glow shade. And then there's also one that's uh, called Dusk, which is supposed to be bronze. And they say that you can wear this either under, in, in, or over your face makeup, or you can slather it onto your body. And I would say that of all of the liquid highlighters, that the formula for this one, in terms of the other ingredients besides the shimmer stuff, is the, this is the one that's really the closest to the Westman Atelier one. So it has squalane, sunflower seed oil, sodium hyaluronate, other moisturizers, but it basically is a thick, moisturizing, uh, oily, uh, sort of a semi-gel product with an awfully lot of shimmer in it, a lot more than the, the West Med Atelier one. So Live Tinted is a company that creates products primarily for people with darker skin tones than I have. And that could be why I'm not feeling like this is exactly the right product for me. I'm not sure that the undertone is really that uh, appropriate for use on my whole skin or even as a highlighter for me. And it also is the case that this is a very, very shiny product. So it could be that if you have a, a different skin tone than I do, and if you're looking for a product that's really shiny, then this could really be one to consider because I do think that it has a lot of moisturizing ingredients in it that might be attractive to many people. But for me, I am not sure that this is the right one. So one thing about that product is that it really hasn't irritated my skin at all and it feels like it might be a little bit good for my skin. So that makes me wish that they made some that were a different color and that had a little bit less shimmer in it. And then the next product that I have is one that's been uh, reviewed quite a lot by other people, which is called the Kosas IV. And this is a a uh, highlighter that was released in early 2023. And as you can see here, this is a, a pretty shiny product. I don't think it's nearly as shiny as the Huglo one or some of the other ones, but it is pretty shiny. I think the real uh, criticisms that people had with this product stem from the fact that it seemed in the marketing pro uh, materials that Kosas was suggesting that you use this all over your whole face, sort of like a substitute for a foundation. And, and that would be really inappropriate. That would be very, very shiny. You couldn't really look like the Tin Man if you did that. But I think that uh, as the way that I'm using it, either mixed with a moisturizer or uh, put on on a spot basis, I think it's not too bad. I tried on a few of these different shades at the uh, Sephora store, and I did find that getting the right shade was really important for me, and that when I used a shade that was uh, a, a different shade than the one that I ended up choosing, that it ended up looking a lot worse on me. So I would suggest going and trying this on in the store. There are 10 shades total, so there's a pretty wide range. I think that for me that the, the product feels really good on my skin. I think it's the ingredients seem fine. It wasn't irritating at all. It does have a vitamin D and vitamin K in it. Now, EWG lists those as potentially problematic, but I think just because maybe you could get too much vitamin D or vitamin K from it, but uh, that is not something that worries me a lot. I think, if anything, I'm probably deficient in those vitamins. So while I know that a lot of people were, have been really, really critical of this, I think that it's not too bad uh, as Kosas' products go. I, I wouldn't say that it's one of their best products, but I think I'm going to uh, try to use this a little bit more mixed with moisturizer or on a spot basis just to see if I can get some use out of it. And then the next product that I have here is the one that I think might be my favorite and that in any case is what I'm already wearing on my face. So I will show you a little bit on my hand as well. This is the color 
a crystal nebula from Lisa Eldridge. So it comes with this large applicator and this is a glass bottle. And so here's what it looks like on the back of my hand. So this product comes in five shades and the website states that it is designed to add an implement an amplified luminous glow to the high points of the face while simultaneously delivering some serious skin benefits and a subtle lifting, tightening, and smoothing effect. So what they are claiming is that it has an ingredient called Filmexel in it, and they describe this as a brilliantly clever biopolymer network that forms a resistant and flexible non-occlusive mesh on the skin. Three minutes after application, the biopolymer sets giving a subtle lifting, tightening, and smoothing effect and acts as a natural barrier against pollution and irritants in the atmosphere. So I don't know if it really does that or not. Uh, I think that that's an interesting concept, but I do feel that when I have put this uh, around my uh, eye area and then moving down into my cheek area, that it does feel like uh, rather than emphasizing the wrinkles around my eyes, I do feel that the wrinkles around my eyes do look a little bit better and that in general there's a little bit of a blurring area to this and that this has worked really well for me whether it's mixed with moisturizer or just applied straight to my skin. So I do really kind of like this product a lot. Uh, that's not a surprise. I like almost everything that Lisa Eldridge has made very, very much. And so this one is no exception to it. I only have this one shade, but there are five different shades. So I'm, I'm a little interested in getting another one now. In terms of the ingredients, it seems to focus a lot on the tamarind seed, which is supposed to have polysaccharides and is supposed to be hydrating and to improve elasticity. So I don't feel like I've used other products with that in it, so that's kind of interesting as well. So the next product that I have here is from RMS, and this is called the RMS Radiant Master Radiance Base. So I'll put a little bit of this on my hand here. Uh, this is the, the lighter shade, which is called uh, Rich in Radiance, and then there's also another shade that I will show you which is called Deep in Radiance. So this is kind of a rose gold, and it's supposed to be a highlighter that's a similar shade to many people's skin tone. So this is actually an offshoot of another highlighter that they have that's a, a more solid cream highlighter called the Master Mixer. So again, this is a rose gold highlighter that was very popular, and this is just a, a thinner version that they are suggesting can, can be used more liberally all over, over the face or that can be mixed into foundation. And then they also make this dark version which is uh, called Deep in Radiance. So I'll put a little bit of this on my hand as well. And this is a, a kind of an offshoot of their Buriti bronzer, which is a, a bronzer that's kind of on the red side and that I tend to use as a um, blush, like a neutral blush. So while with the Say product, I feel that I can use either of the, those highlighters on my own face. For this one, I feel that this uh, Deep in Radiance color doesn't really work for me as a mix-in because there is a lot of reddishness to this. So if, if your skin is reddish to begin with, then this could look really natural on me on you. But for me, if I put this all over my whole face, it starts to give me kind of an overly sunburned type of a look and that I really need to use it just very sparingly on certain parts of the face. Uh, the um, Rich in Radiance one, the lighter color, is what I'm doing in the video and I think that that one is uh, a little bit better for me when I'm using it all over the face. But again, I think it really just works better for me if I use it uh, very sparingly as a highlighter on very specific targeted parts of the face. And in that case, it looks really natural and blends in really easily and I think looks uh, very elegant and, and really close, I think, to the Westman Atelier Super Loaded Cream Highlighters that I like so much. And this product uh, was developed again be before um, RMS got purchased by a, uh, another company and was still making only like really natural and clean products. So this has just uh, basically just oils and waxes in it. It has jojoba oil, castor seed oil, coconut oil, metal foam seed oil, and chia seed oil. I actually really like this product 
and uh, I don't think that it's gone uh, rancid on me yet, and I've had it for like 18 months, so that's a pretty long time for a product like this. And I feel like I've gotten a lot of use out of it so far, and I probably will continue using it. And the next product that we have here is from Ilia. This is called the Ilia Light Serum Highlighter. And it comes in three shades, which are pink, pearl, rose gold, and soft gold. And I happen to have the soft gold version of this. So you can see that this version is uh, quite gold, uh, kind of a yellow gold. And it's also very, 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 very shiny. This may be the shiniest highlighter that I own, except for maybe that Hue Glow one. And that makes it... Uh, really challenging for me to use both because I think the color of it is not right for my face and also because it is so glowy. So I feel that when I mixed it with the moisturizer that that look was not really good and then when I applied it uh, just on my face again it's it's just not really the right product for me. Maybe if I had chosen one of the other colors it would be working better. Uh, but again, my experience with Ilia is that uh, all of these are uh, acceptable products that could be used by someone, but they're, all the formulas are getting uh, uh, something like 10 years old probably, and uh, none of them are really uh, working that much for me, and they're all very expensive. So the next product that I have here is from Dr. Barbara Sturm, and this is a very, very expensive skincare product company from Germany. So they make mostly skincare products, but this one is uh, the one product that they make that's even close to being makeup, and it's just this, this highlighter that you are supposed to be able to use pretty much all over your whole face just to give a really soft glow. So it's, it's almost more like a primer, but they do intend for this to be used on top of makeup rather than uh, underneath it. And this is a, an extremely expensive product. So for a very small amount of it, they're charging $60. And then if you want to buy a whole ounce, it's $150. So I think that this is an awfully lot of money. Uh, the, and that all of the Dr. Barbara Stern products are an awfully lot of money. However, uh, Oprah Winfrey recently invested in this company. Uh, she became interested in it, I think primarily because they offer a line of products that are designed for a deep skin tone. But I think that because of her involvement in it, that you're going to be hearing a lot more from this company. So I did want to at least try it out. And I do think that compared to all of the other uh, products that I put on in this video footage, this is looking pretty good to me. Uh, I think that it really uh, is one of my top picks when I just look at myself on the video screen and in person. So I do think it's a good product. Uh, whether or not it's worth that much money, I'm not sure. Uh, the product does include two fermented ingredients, sodium hyaluronate, almond oil, vitamin C. There's not any scent. I think it's pretty. I do work really well with fermented ingredients in general. I think that those are, are among the things that help my skin quality the most. And I do feel like my skin felt good after I put these little drops on it. So at least I feel like it's something that I'm doing for my skin that's good for my skin rather than bad for my skin. So that does make me a little bit... I uh, used a little bit interested in actually buying a full bottle of it. I don't know that I'm going to, but I'm glad to have given it a try. And maybe if I can get a 20% uh, off during the Sephora sale, maybe at some point I'll splurge on it. So those are all the liquid highlighters that I have tried already and that I would use again. Now let's move on to primers that I have found to be uh, potentially okay and that I might consider using again. And the first one that I have here is a product called Glossier Future Dew, uh, which is called an oil serum hybrid. And they are selling this primarily as use as either a, a skincare product just to use on its own or as apparently a primer. So you can see when I rub this on my hand that this is a very, very kind of a thick, oily, uh, dewy type of a product. So that makes it really unusual. And when it's on my skin, there's a little bit of mica in there, so there is a little bit of a sheen, but it's mostly an oily, kind of a gooey uh, lotion type of a product that really stays on the surface of my skin. So if I put this on my skin, uh, quite a while later, my skin still looks like it's covered with um, sunscreen or some kind of an oily substance. 
So that is not something that I am that enthusiastic about, that look, but some people apparently do find it to be a good look for them because this has been a, a popular product at least for a while, at least uh, when Glossier was really uh, popular, this product was one of the, the ones that people really liked. And in terms of the ingredient list, this contains glycerin, squalane, sodium hyaluronate, jojoba oil, evening primrose oil, grapeseed oil, rosehip oil and some other moisturizers. So it's not that they're not uh, quality moisturizers, I think that they are, but there's an awfully lot of them in this and it's uh, somehow made into a product that's very, very thick. It really wasn't irritating at all, uh, so that part has been good, but it's still not something I really want to wear. It does have a pretty strong scent, so it has rosemary leaf oil in it, which I think could be part of it, but it also has uh, an extract from a tree that's native to Korea in China called Avodia rhodocarpa fruit extract. And that is supposed to be helpful for microcirculation and anti-inflammatory. I don't know that I really like that scent that much, but maybe it wouldn't keep me from using it if I liked the product in general. So I guess my conclusion about this particular product is that I feel like I'm always missing something because I have very dry skin and so I feel like a product like this should be especially appropriate for me, if anyone. And yet every time I, I use this product, I'm like, this is really weird stuff. And then I never want to use it again. And that is especially the case because I just really don't like the way it looks on my face. I feel like it, it looks like I just slathered on a whole bunch of sunscreen because someone told me that I needed to and that it uh, was, had not yet sunk in yet. And it just sinks in very, very slowly. So I don't think that's a very good look, at least not on me. Now, on the other hand, Honest Beauty makes a primer with a little bit of a glow in it that I actually do really like. So I will squirt a little bit of that on my hands and you can see what this is like. This uh, does have a little bit of a tint to it. It's not totally clear, but I think it looks pretty on my skin. There's just a little bit of a glow to it that makes it look very natural and pretty as far as I'm concerned. So this product is from Honest Beauty, which is Jessica Alba's company. Uh, this is called the Honest Everything Primer. It costs $23. It contains two types of hyaluronic acid plus shea butter, so it is moisturizing. I think that this is a mildly shimmery product that I think looks really nice on my skin out of the bottle. I was kind of surprised to have taken it out of my stash and put it on my skin again because I think it looks really pretty. So I think I'm going to try to get a little bit more use out of that. In general, I seem to have had very good experience with Honest Skin Care products in general. Their, their makeup products are a little bit more hit and miss, but I have really liked really all of the skincare products that I've tried from them, unless they have rose geranium oil in it, which is just my individual uh, sensitivity issues. But other than that, I really think that, that Honest, uh, especially for the price point, but really even in general compared to much more expensive skincare products, I think that, that everything that I've tried from Honest has been very, very good. So this is uh, not an exception to that, and I think that as a uh, uh, relatively inexpensive, uh, glowy type products go. This is a very good one. And then the next primer that I have is from 100% Pure, and this is called the Luminous Primer. So I will put a little bit of this on my hand. And this is really, uh, doesn't have any color to it, and it really only has a very small amount of shimmer. So this product is primarily consisting just of quality oils in wax and rice starch. And the oils that are present in this are jojoba oil and avocado butter. And then there's also some aloe and some vitamin C and some resveratrol. So it's supposed to be good for your skin. And I think that it, it feels okay on my skin. And I think it looks fairly nice. There, the amount of shimmer in it is very moderate. So it really just looks a little bit glowy on your skin without uh, looking in any way not natural at all. Uh, there's no preservatives at all in this product, so I really should make an effort to use it up. But I've had it for more than a year, I think, and it still smells and feels fine to me. So I, I think it might last for a while. I would suggest buying all 100% pure products directly from the company because I don't think that you want to get something that, that sat in the distribution channel for very long because they don't have a lot of uh, preservatives in it. But all in all, uh, 
the the hundred percent pure products that I've tried. They have seemed to be quality products, uh, for, especially if you don't want to have anything uh, artificial or laboratory made in your products. I, I've had good experiences with them, but they are quite pricey. And then the last primer that I have here that I think I might be able to use myself is the Ilia True Skin Radiant Priming Serum, which is kind of expensive, $52. And I just have a couple of these little bottles, so I haven't really had much of a chance to use it. So I can't say for sure that my skin will not eventually become sensitized to it and that I will be able to use it. But so far, it seems to be okay to me. It is a clear serum, and it only really has a tiny little bit of a glow to it. So I'm not even sure if you can see the glow. Uh, in this camera angle because it, it is so uh, mild and it's a clear formula so you're not going to see anything except the glow on my hand. Although so far I have tolerated this product I have seen quite a few people user reviews say that this product was really really bad for their skin and that they experienced burning and other kinds of irritation so that is something that that does concern me uh, it, the product contains benzyl alcohol, sodium benzoate, benzoic acid, all of those things could be conceivably a little bit annoying to people uh, or maybe very annoying to some people. And the other thing that I wonder about here is beta-glucan. So this is a, a product that is derived from yeast, fungi, seaweed, or oats. So it's supposed to be used for minimizing uh, redness and wrinkles. The thing that I know about beta-glucan is that a lot of people that have uh, like chronic fatigue syndrome or mold illness, those kinds of issues, that those people when they take beta-glucans in terms of supplements that they can be uh, really irritated by them and it can have a really bad uh, effect on them. So I'm just wondering if people with those kinds of illnesses can have a, can have a, a problem with this ingredient in skin care as well. So considering the price and considering that I'm not seeing anything that special about this product and considering that uh, so far Ilia has not been a, uh, a standout brand for me in terms of any of their products and in terms of those reports, uh, I'm not real inclined to buy a full bottle of this. But if you've tried it, then please let me know what you think of it because I'm certainly open to more input. And so now let's move along to the products that I tried that have caused irritation for me and that I, I wouldn't use again, although I did film myself putting them on uh, for the sake of the video so you could take a look at them. So the first one is the primer from Burt's Bees. So I'll show you what this looks like on my hand. This is a very white and uh, fairly thick lotion. Uh, and if you rub it in a lot, then it, it uh, just leaves a more of a shine and less of all this white color, but it is pretty white out of the bottle. And this is called the Burt's Bees Goodness Glows Primer. It is only $12. The Burt's Bees is owned by Clorox, by the way. So it, it started out as a natural company, but I don't think it's real natural anymore. Uh, this, com this product lists fragrance, uh, but Burt's Bees does say that all of their fragrances are natural. I would guess that this actually is a natural fragrance. I don't really find it to be offensive in the same way that I find synthetic fragrance to be offensive. And I don't feel like the fragrance lasts as long as a lot of uh, synthetic fragrances, but I uh, don't really like the smell that much either. There's also citronella in this, so that could be another ingredient that's causing uh, irritation. There's a lot of moisturizers in this. Uh, some of them are synthetic laboratory type created moisturizers. And there's also some avocado oil and some glycerin. Now in most of the products from Burt's Bees, what I find is that they list flavor on the ingredients and then the flavor is one that I don't really care for but that I'm not actually irritated by the product. This one actually did cause irritation and a, a fair amount of irritation. I also feel like in looking at this on the video footage and in person that I don't really feel like it did my skin a lot of favors. I feel like my, my wrinkles look worse with this product and that uh, it's uh, really just not uh, looking very good on me. And then the next one that I have here is from Rare Beauty, and this is actually listed as, I think, like the third biggest seller 
of all the makeup products on Sephora the last time I looked at their website. So even though I was a little bit skeptical about whether this would be a good product for me, I felt like I should go ahead and give it a try. The ingredient list actually looks not too bad. I don't see anything on it that looks like it should cause me to react. But unfortunately, I did have a negative experience in terms of this irritating my skin anyway. I also had a, a negative experience with one of uh, Rare Beauty's foundations irritating my skin. So whatever is going on with that line, it doesn't seem to agree with my own skin personally. I did find that their blushes were okay, so I'm not saying that there aren't any products from them that I would use, but uh, this one uh, is not one of them. Uh, this is a fairly inexpensive product. $25 is a, a good price for a bottle of highlighter that is this large. There are eight shades. The ones that I have here is called Mesmerize, which is a rose bronze, which is said to be uh, Selena Gomez's go-to shade. So maybe that is um, not really the right shade for me. But I also feel like it's just very, very shimmery. So maybe more shimmery than, uh, than I prefer. It's a little bit more like the Kosas product. So I think, again, that although Rare Beauty seems to be more targeting a variety of ages, that uh, their primary target mar market is still, I think, young people that are under 30 or 35. So therefore, maybe they're more interested in highlighters that are a lot more shimmery than ones I would use. This is actually much more shiny than the Kosas product, but with this product, no one is suggesting that you should be using it on your whole face or even like uh, implying that maybe you could. It's really obviously designed just as a targeted highlighter. So the next one that I have here is the Jones Road highlighter, and I have this in the shade Cool Rose. So I will show you what this looks like here. So like many of the products that Jones Road released uh, towards the beginning of their company start, this one has a lot of essential oils in it. So in this case, it has uh, limonene, orange oil, citral, citronella, grapefruit pe peel oil, and linalool. And I think that the issue with this product is that it just really has too many essential oils and those are just irritating for many people, including me. I think that, uh, you know, the issue with the essential oils is that they do serve as a preservative, and I think that uh, Bobbi Brown was very concerned at the beginning that she was going to have a lot of product that was going to sit around for a long time, that she wasn't going to be able to sell, and that she was spending all of her, and then it was going to go bad, and that she was putting her whole, uh, her whole personal wealth into this company and therefore she wanted to make sure she could uh, keep the product and not have it all go bad on her. And so I don't blame her for that, uh, but I do think that there are quite a few of the products that were initially released from Jones Road that I cannot tolerate. And I think that it's because they're using essential oils as preservatives, so they're using a lot of them. And this is one of those products. I really can't use this one at all, even on a targeted basis, and certainly if I mix it with the moisturizer and put it all over my face. That's kind of disastrous with all those essential oils in it. Uh, but it does qualify as being clean at Credo. It would qualify as being clean at Sephora. There are four shades in this. Um, there's also, I have the Cool Rose, and then there's also a light pink, a champagne, and a bronze. It's a highlighter that is uh, more on the kind of a glassy side, so it's uh, fairly translucent except for the shimmer and the, the slight amount of color. And it does give kind of a little bit of a glossy look to the skin. I don't think that it's really being recommended that you use it all over your whole face. I think it's more designed to be used on a spot basis. Uh, it contains a lot of oils, so Jones Road seems to be mostly designed for people that are uh, older, maybe older than 40 or 50. And so this contains a, a number of different oils, and it also contains some coconut oil, which some people do have issues with. I think that this would be probably a nice product that I would use a lot if it didn't have all those essential oils in it. Uh, fortunately, the more recent products that Jones Road has been releasing, none of those have uh, products 
in them that that would be irritating to me, uh, like uh, any of those fragrance type ingredients. And I've done really well with all the recent ones. So my hope is that this company has been successful enough that as time goes on, that they will continue to release more products that that I can tolerate and maybe uh, replace some of these ones that go go in excess on the essential oils with ones that are uh, more clean. And the next product that I have here is from Milk Makeup. So this is called Bionic Glow. And this comes in two shades, and I have this shade called Peach Glow, I think. So I will show you what this looks like. It's pretty thin, it's a little opaque, and I think this could be pretty, but it does have a lot of fragrance in it, and it has been very irritating to my skin. So it lists natural fragrance, and I don't find the fragrance to be offensive at all. I just don't think that it belongs in my skin products. It is labeled as clean at Sephora, as are other milk products. I've had some problems with some other milk products as well. Even though this brand is considered to be clean at Sephora, I think that it's uh, pretty marginal in a lot of cases. So although I don't think that this is an overly shimmery product, and I think it looks pretty in terms of the amount of shimmer on my face, I do think that this uh, product has the potential of, ir of uh, exacerbating the texture on my face. So I feel like it's making my wrinkles look worse, and I even feel like it's making my pores look worse, and I don't even have that that much of a problem with the pores. So this is not really a product that I would be really inclined to use even if I could tolerate it. Now another highlighter that I tried but that I don't have anymore is called Pie the Impossible Glow, which is something that I purchased from Credo. And this was uh, quite irritating to my face to the point that I felt that it was pointless to keep it around anymore. This product uh, contains what's called sclerotium gum, which I read is a naturally derived gel-like polysaccharide, which is a sugar-based ingredient, which is produced from the fermentation of a type of fungus and that is uh, used in cosmetics to thicken and stabilize the formulas and can function as a skin conditioning ingredient. However, this is a fungus that also causes southern blight in crops, so it's kind of a white color. So I just wonder, because I'm so reactive to mold in general, that maybe this is a product that my skin just plain doesn't like. And there's also some algae extract in it, so conceivably the algae extract could be contaminated with the cyanotoxins as well. Sometimes that's not controlled very well. And pretty much this, this product consists just of those two ingredients, along with some glycerin and some water. And, uh, the, and a little bit of mica and a little bit of hyaluronic acid. So I would imagine that one of those two natural quote-unquote ingredients is what caused this one to be such a surprise to me in terms of how bad it was for my face. So uh, apparently for some people it's fine, it has a lot of good reviews on Credo, but for me that was not a product that I could use at all, and it is gone. There are three shades of this, and I did read in some of the reviews that people thought this was awfully shiny as well, so maybe uh, that wouldn't be that great of a product for me regardless. And then the last product that I really wish that I could use, but that I do react to uh, more than I'm willing to tolerate is this primer from Victoria Beckham. So this primer is made for Victoria Beckham by Augustinus Botter, which is a German skincare company that makes very, very expensive uh, skincare, including something that's called the Rich Cream. And Augustinus Botter uh, is a former stem cell researcher from a good university, apparently. And uh, the skincare that he sells has an ingredient in it that is supposed to be uh, skin rejuvenating, and they're not really giving any claims with regard to whether or not it has uh, effects on stem cells. But in any case, uh, this is, there's a lot of buzz uh, behind this product. So Victoria Beckham liked this product so much that she got Augustina Spotter to make a, a couple of products for her line. So there's a serum, and then there's this primer. This is a, a, a slightly glowy primer in the regular version, and then there is also a um, 
gold version, uh, which I've not tried. I think that if I could tolerate this product, this would be a fantastic primer and that I would probably be motivated to use it on a regular basis, both because I think it does give my skin a really beautiful glow and just on its own, and also uh, because it has this ingredient in it, the uh, it's called uh, TFC8, I guess, and it uh, seems to have the potential of actually uh, having a positive effect on my skin as well. Now, unfortunately, when I put this on my skin, it just does cause a little bit of irritation. And I think with this particular product, the, the problematic ingredient is propylene glycol. There is quite a lot of evidence that propylene glycol can be very irritating for some people. And so the fact that it's uh, serving as an irritant on my own skin is not that much of a surprise. I'm not sure why they found it necessary to put that particular ingredient in this product. I really wish they had left it out, especially since Victoria Beckham is supposed to be a clean beauty company. It only has a six-month uh, usage life, though, so I would not suggest uh, buying a large supply of this and then anticipating on using it for a long time because it's really not supposed to last that long. And then I see that there's one more uh, product out there that I would consider, uh, except that it has ingredients in it that I know are going to be problematic for me. And this is the RMS Supernatural Radiant Serum uh, with an SPF of 30. So this is a brand new from RMS and it is available in three shades. And it's uh, supposed to be something that you can use all over your whole face and it just gives you just a little bit of a shimmer as well as sun protection. The sun protection is from zinc. The issue for me is that it contains more than a dozen different fragrance ingredients, and the one that I know that I'm reactive to, regardless of the amount, is rose geranium oil. So I am not going to purchase it for that reason, but even if it didn't have the rose geranium oil in it, I still feel like it has so many different kinds of fragrances in it that even if it's just a little bit of each one, if you're, if you're reactive to anything, then it's probably going to be in this product. So I think that's a little bit weird because the people that have historically been RMS's biggest customers have been people that are um, fairly sensitive and uh, Rosemary Swift herself is fairly sensitive to uh, a variety of different ingredients. So they're uh, really kind of uh, ditching their old audience and thinking that they're going to get a whole new audience of people. And my fear is that Westman Atelier is, is taking that same kind of attack. Thanks very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you've had any experiences with liquid highlighters, then please let us know about those in the comments section. In addition, if you have yet to subscribe to this channel, then please go ahead and do that. And thank uh, Coco and I love you very much. Uh, goodbye.